4.2 day 4 notes. We're going to be comparing linear and exponential functions in these. So looking at properties of both and how they're a little bit different and in some ways kind of how they're the same. Um, so for linear functions, things you already know, you could write it in point slope form. So y minus y1 equals the slope times x minus x1 and that's where you just plug in points for x1 and y1 plug in values for those and the slope goes for m obviously or you can put it in slope intercept form y equals mx plus b okay so the big takeaway for linear functions they have a constant slope a constant rate of change we know that but then in terms of like their graph or their values that you can um, input and output they're increasing by a fixed value so it's the same every single time that's what they're increasing by that's what linear functions do or I suppose they could be decreasing by a fixed value also. What is that fixed value? Take a wild guess. That would be the rate of change, the slope. Okay. Now for exponential functions. So we have our equation that we're familiar with now, y equals a times b to the x. Okay, and you should be able to identify a couple of those values by now. A, we know that's the starting value, or you call it the initial value. And graphically, we've already shown this. That's actually the y-intercept also. So the A value also gives you the y-intercept. Because to find the y-intercept, you just plug in 0 for x. So b to the 0 is just 1. That goes away. So that's why we know. We, we've proven this before um, in some other notes. So A gives us the y-intercept. And then B, that's our growth factor. Um, and that's calculated by 1 plus r, where r is like the actual rate that it's growing or decaying or increasing or decreasing. So for exponentials, instead of a constant slope, like, uh, like linear, they have a constant percent change. So they're either growing or decaying at a constant percent. So what does that mean for us? That means it grows by a fixed percentage every time. It's multiplied by a fixed percentage every single time. Or, likewise, it could decay by a fixed percent every single time. Okay, so linear we should be very familiar with. And now we're going to do a couple different operations with exponential that will be probably a little bit new for us. Some of it you may remember from Algebra 2, though. So my first example. I want to know I'm going to give you a table of values. I want to know, is it linear or exponential? Or technically, it could be neither, I guess, depending on the situation. So part A, let's make a table. And I'm going to go x values and then f of x values. So my inputs and then my outputs. And the x values, these will be pretty easy. Negative 2, negative 1, 0, 4, and 6. And then my output values for f of x, 2, negative 1, negative 4, negative 16, negative 22. So the question is, is this function linear or exponential? Okay, so you should be able to prove whether it's linear or not. We actually did this um, in chapter 1, the very beginning of the year. So if it's linear, it has a constant slope or a constant rate of change. So if you find the slope between each pair of points, it should be the same throughout. And if even one of them fails, well then it's not linear, you know that already. So, if I look for the first set of points here, so from this point to this point, the slope, easy to calculate, would just be negative 3. And then how about for the next pair of points? So the slope between the next pair, also negative 3. Hopefully you see the trend. Find the slope between this pair of points. Should be negative 3 as well. And same for the last pair of points there. So this proves that this relationship is linear. So we just find the slope between each pair of points. <clears throat> it's the same throughout. So that is definitely linear. And the equation is actually really obvious if you just stop and think for a second. You don't have to do two points and we already found the slope. You don't have to plug it into uh, like point slope form. Because if you look, you already know what the y-intercept is. Look at those points. The y-intercept you get when you plug in 0 for x. So actually, the y-intercept is here at 0, negative 4. So if you just think for a second, this is actually um, easier. We're done doing math. We can just look at the values. 
y-intercept is 0, negative 4. The slope, we just found that a bunch of times. That's negative 3. Okay, so my equation, I know the intercept, I know the slope. f of x instead of y. f of x equals negative 3x minus 4. So that's the slope, that's the y-intercept. So to tell if something's linear or not, and we've done this before, the slope has to be the same between all pairs of points. Okay, so this one was definitely linear. Let's look at part B. Make another table. Now I want to do x and g of x. My x values are going to be, they're going to be even easier. I'm going to go 1 through 4, counting by 1s there. My g values, they're not quite as nice. So if you get a table like this, is it linear or exponential? Or technically, it could, be, it could be neither technically, but I think you'll get an idea as to what this one is pretty quick. So right away, if you try to say that this is linear, let's look at the slope between these first two points. The slope between the first two would be 1.6. If you do the slope for the second pair of points, you get 1.92. So right away, an alarm should go off. Those slopes are different. This is not linear. So I'm going to go ahead and erase those. This, that's not linear. Okay, is it exponential though? Just because it's not linear doesn't mean it actually has to be exponential. Okay, could be neither. So how do you prove if something is exponential? That's the question. So instead of going up or going down by the same amount each time, exponential, you want to find the ratio of successive terms, and they should be the same. They should be constant. So the ratio of successive terms is constant. Ratio means like a fraction. Maybe I'll add that in, like fraction or divide by. Okay, so let's look at our first terms here. So these are all successive, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. So those are all going up by 1. So these are successive terms. Now the ratio, though. So let's compare 9.6 to 8. So if I do 9.6 divided by 8, I get 1.2. Okay, that's good. Doesn't really tell me anything yet, but that's what I get. Now let's look at the next pair. So let's compare 11.52 to 9.6. Let's look at the next pair of points there. So 11.52 divided by 9.6. That, in fact, is also 1.2. So the ratio of successive terms so far, we're good. Compare the next pair of terms. So 13.824 divided by 11.52. Notice, I'm just going down the line here, doing the bigger one divided by the smaller one. Bigger one divided by smaller one. Again, I get 1.2. And for the last two terms, I also get 1.2. So that's how you prove if something's exponential or not. Successive terms that ratio is constant. So for all of these, you get 1.2. This relationship is, in fact, exponential. Okay, so now let's write the equation if we know it's exponential. And again, this is actually really easy at this point. So what is the A value in this case? Well, that's kind of looking you right in the face. The A value is also like the y-intercept or the starting point. So that's when x is 0, y is 8. That's the y-intercept. So the A value is actually up here already um, apparent. So the A value is just 8. The B value, that's our growth factor. So what's it growing by each time? And that's actually what we just found, 1, 2, 3, 4 times. The growth factor, each one of these terms, the successive terms, grows by a factor of 1.2. It's like it's growing 120% each time. So the growth factor, we've already found that, that's 1.2. That's really all we need. Let's go ahead and define the exponential function, and that's g of x. So g of x equals a times b to the x. All right, so to review there, exponential functions, successive terms, the ratio is constant between them. And I always go down the line like bigger divided by smaller, bigger divided by smaller. All right, so example two, I want you to find the formula for an exponential function g of x 
given only a little bit of information. So I'm going to give you that g of 4 equals 12 and g of 8 equals 16.8. So we did this in chapter 1 for linear functions. We haven't done it for exponential functions yet. But I just basically gave you two points, two xy coordinates, two points, and I want you to find the exponential function. And don't forget an exponential function is y equals a times b to the x. So you might be thinking, what the heck, how would I get that out of just a couple points? But that's what we're going to do. So the first thing I want you to do, since you're given two points, you have two pieces of information, is substitute both points into an exponential function on their own. So they can each have their own little exponential function. So don't forget the input, that's the x. The output, that's the y. So now we have these two points. So I kind of set them up like y equals a times b to the x. That's it. That's what I did for this point. And I'm going to do it for this one also. Notice how I'm going to stack these two things up, by the way. So y equals a times b to the x. So that's all I've done so far. Is I'm given two points. I plugged each of them into their own personal exponential function. Okay, so that's the big um, that's the big start there. Now, how do I go forward? Because I want to solve. I need to solve for a and b. I need to know what those are so I can write my function. Well, if you'll notice, the reason I stack them up is because I actually want to do some elimination. And how do I do that? Well. If you notice you have two equations and two variables that you're trying to solve for, that's when you can use either elimination or substitution. So what I like to do is I'm going to eliminate the a value by just dividing the two equations. So I'm just going to divide straight down and divide that a value out. And that's something you can actually do. It actually holds mathematically. Um, an alternative method, if you don't like this one, you can always just solve for a and use substitution, like solve for a in one of them and plug it into the other. But I'm going to divide, so I'm going to put like a fraction on each side, I'm going to divide this equation on top by this equation on bottom. And then what do I get? Okay, so 16.8 divided by 12, I don't know what that is, it's some weird decimal, so I'm just going to leave it like that for now. And then a divided by a, the whole point, I, the whole reason I did that, so those a's cancel out. And then b to the eighth divided by b to the four, that's just b to the 4. Okay, so now this is actually pretty easy to solve for b. So solve for b, and in this case, you just take the fourth root of both sides. So you don't want b to the fourth power. You want b. How do you get rid of the fourth power? You take the fourth root on both sides. So b is whatever the fourth root of this thing is, right? 16.8 over 12, I just kind of left it that way. And this you can actually get in your calculator. So it's approximately to three decimal places, 1.088. Some people ask me if you need to put plus minus for this one. And typically I would say yes. But in this scenario, this is exponential growth. So you only want the positive one. For example, when x is at 4, we're at 12. And when x is at 8, we're at 16.8. So if you can think about that, like if you can plot those points, that's definitely exponential growth. So I only want the positive case here. And now that you know what b is, it's easy to get a. Just substitute back into one of these equations. I typically pick the easier one with the smaller numbers. So <clears throat> substitute the b value into either equation to get the a value. So I'm going to go with the 12 equals a times b to the fourth. I'm going to use that one. And then where I saw b, I just plug in 1.088. And now this is pretty easy. I don't know what, this is going to give me some decimal over here, multiplied by a. So I just divide both sides by 1.088 to the fourth. Because I only want to type this in my calculator once. So a is whatever this quotient is. So a equals 12 divided by 1.088 to the fourth, which is 8.57. Beautiful. Now I have both a and b. The whole goal was to write this function for g of x. So now I have a times b to the x, and I have my values for a and b. So there's my function. 
So um, I guess the most difficult part here, plug each of these points into their own special equations. I stack them up, and I like to divide them to get A to go away. But if you'd rather at that phase just like solve one of these for A and substitute into the other one, that's fine too. Alright, so final example here, example three. I'm going to start you off with just a sketch here. And I want you just to be able to identify that this is like um, an exponential function and the fact that it's exponential growth. So all I have is some axes, and then I got uh, the vertical intercept here of 5, and then a point at 2, comma 12. Let's go ahead and sketch that. And then you should think to yourself what kind of question I would ask based on this basic information. What kind of question would I ask? Well, if I want you to write, if you thought I wanted you to write an exponential function or the, the function that models this graph, you'd be exactly correct because that's what I want you to do. And this one's actually easier than what we just did. So yes, you have two points. So yes, you could plug them both into their own equation and do elimination and that whole process again. But if you look closely, 5, the y-intercept, 0, 5. So if you know the y-intercept, you already have your a value to be 5. That's the whole point. So if you see a graph like this, oh, you have the y-intercept, 0, 5. That's just the a value. So we know the y-intercept is 0, 5, so the a value is 5. That's the starting amount. So then the only difficult part, the only thing we have left to do is solve for b. But there's still a piece of information we haven't used yet. We've used the y-intercept, but we still haven't used this, the fact that there's another point on the graph at 2, 12. So how are you going to use that? There's not very many ways to use it, right? That's an x, that's a y, substituted into the equation. So substitute that point to find b. So 2 goes for the x, and 12 would go for the y. And now this one's actually pretty simple. If you want to get to b, let's just solve for b. Divide both sides by 5. So you get 12 over 5 equals b squared. And then you don't want b squared, you want b. So just take the square root of both sides. So I just typed my calculator once, so I only round once. Um, and again, you don't need plus minus in this case because you just have to think, is this exponential growth? Yes, then you want the positive version. So I know we took the square root, and usually we put plus minus because it's a variable. But in this case, it's exponential growth, so I'll just keep the positive version. And now that we have our b value, we can write our equation y equals a times b to the x. So this case was actually a lot nicer because we already knew the a value. We didn't have to just plug the points in to do elimination or substitution or any of that. All right, that's all for these notes. I'll see you in class.